Hey, hey, all you Arizona lovers, this is the Finding Arizona podcast, episode number 386. I'm your host, Jose. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Today's episode is with Bina Coleman, who is the founder behind Compassionate Callers. I want to say thank you to Bina. She was so wonderful to talk to. This is a chat that is very meaningful and very beautiful in the They are a beautiful business that works with elderly and those who are homebound to have communication with them on a regular basis and provide them with someone that they can knowingly have a program with that they can, you know, make sure that they're doing well. Because all of us, even in today's society, are busy with a thousand things, whether you are having your own kids or working a a job that just doesn't allow you to communicate with those people that you love so much. I want to say thank you to those who are actually working with her because this program and this business is something that is beautiful in the sense that I wish I knew about it earlier and knowing that there are individuals out there who care enough to want to work for this. It is incredibly uh, wonderful to know that there are people like this out there in the world. So that being said, we're going to jump from this business into our own business and tell you a little bit about ourselves. You can catch every episode of our podcast at FindingArizonaPodcast.com. We make it easy for you guys to be connected with us through social media, through Finding Arizona Podcast, under everything. Uh, Social media wise, we're at Instagram, we're at uh, Twitter slash X, and we're at Facebook, all under Finding Arizona Podcast. We want to make sure that you guys are staying connected with us and knowing that we are working our butts off this holiday season as much as you guys are and we want to provide you with some wonderful conversations and some wonderful business local businesses that you can go out and seek and hopefully be able to provide a place for you to go to and help out either through uh, volunteering or if it's something that you want to purchase an item from we want to do that and show you guys what the valley and arizona as a whole has to offer that being said also we have a new episode of the vlog blog uh, is available at our youtube site and you can go check that out under finding arizona podcast search us and then there you can subscribe that would be very helpful to us Brittany's trying to keep you connected through our business and through our family through these blogs and blogs and I, we really appreciate her for doing that we also want to say thank you to everyone who's been just you know sending us christmas letters christmas cards and just anything and everything to you know just stay connected with us on any single level so we have been working uh, so diligently on the episodes we also have plans to go see Brittany's side of the family and let Atlas have some fun in the sun in San Diego we also are working uh, make to make sure that every episode for the weekend is provided to you guys uh, for the upcoming uh, holiday season we went out to go see Christmas lights we went out to go see Santa just recently this weekend and we got a video of that going on Uh, we also are doing a lot more with uh, just trying to provide you guys codes that you guys can go seek and have for yourselves and that is always connected with our link in the bios below so if you look at those or if you sign up for our newsletter which is also available on our website you will receive those codes those discount codes and there you can go and get some really local fun stuff and then also some national brands that we've been working with and so we hope that you guys enjoy these let us know what you want in next by sending us an email at finding arizona podcast at gmail.com we'll try and connect with every person that you guys provide us and that will conclude our little update on what's going on in our neck of the woods we're going to jump right into this episode episode number 386 with compassionate callers we will see you next time and as always kisses hugs and belly rubs to our four-legged friends we will see you next time
Welcome back, everybody, to the Finding Arizona podcast. As always, we bring in fantastic guests every week, and today is no different. It's okay. The screen goes on and off, and we continue forward no matter <laughs> you what. <caught> me. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd love to introduce you, Bina Coleman. Uh, she is, I'm going to let her tell what the business is, because I would do it injustice for explaining what this business, beautiful business that she provides to um, to our, I want to say, elderly generation. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and let you take the reins, introduce the business, introduce what you guys provide, and we will go forward with our questions after that. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Jose, for having me. I'm I'm so excited to be here. Um, so I, like you said, my name is Bina, and I have founded a company called Compassionate Callers. And what we do is we're able to call people wherever they call home, truly, mm -hmm. up to five times a day, seven days a week. And that's a plethora of reasons. Um, it really started for a few things, mostly loneliness calls and mm -hmm. um, medication reminders. And it's just kind of expanded from there. Yeah. So those up to five calls are, uh, like I mentioned, medication, but they could also be meal reminders. Nice. Um, truly, we're a proactive faller because we're proactively calling up to mm -hmm. five times a day. So if you're worried your loved one or you know your loved one is a fall risk, um, and you worry about them at home, we are calling. So we know, hey, did they yeah. pick up? Did they might have fallen and can't pick up the phone? So we have all of that kind of stuff going on throughout yeah. the calls. That's awesome. See, again, we were talking about this off air and just, you know, the plethora of different understandings of generational, like just the idea of like, one part is this fall. I didn't even, it didn't even click in my head and that you brought it up. I'm like, yeah, like fall risk is an important thing to kind of keep in mind, but not only that, but the sharpness of your brain when you have a routine like this, you know, like you said, you brought up keeping your meal plan straight and keeping your medication on, on, a, on a cord, you know, coordination basis. You know, I was talking to my wife about this and just the understanding of like having a routine like this keeps your mind sharp, but it's also something that, you know, you, you look forward to, you yeah. look and your, your brain kind of has this, um, injection of, um, serotonin. Like it's the joy of like knowing that you are going to anticipate a phone call for just you and looking for your well being and feeling loved is just something that is inevitably going to be a part of your life on a routine schedule, but it's also allowing your brain to be like, okay, someone cares enough for me that they're calling on a, on a daily, uh, daily, daily, you know, call. And so that just to me is like the best kind of hug, kiss, love feeling yeah. that you can have. And as my, uh, I was talking to you about as my grandparents are getting older, um, this is something that becomes and as I spoke to my wife about it, it gets hard because you yeah. are so busy with your own life and with your own family that it does become more of a, a difficult thing to do on a daily routine to be like, hey, call your grandmother or call your grandfather or call your, you know, someone who's in that state of being because my wife had an aunt who had uh, dementia and was in a home and um, was suffering through this uh, problem and it's just not, it's not just one person, but it's, it's a, it's a plethora of like aunts, yeah, uncles, exactly. all of these things. So um, you can't always be there. You can't always, you know, have the time to be there. And so this in itself is a next, you know, helpful thing. And I've, again, it's like our technology as we grow up or as we kind of see fit to us, like, you know, I would love to ask this question, you know, as you saw this kind of routine basis being needed like this routine to be needed i wanted to know like how the technology has started to fit and allow this kind of um you know business to succeed and and it just seems like it works well now that we also have this newer technology of like video calls as well yeah. too so real quick and I, I will touch on that but i wanted to, to kind of piggyback on what you said about the clients mm -hmm. getting the calls every day yeah. and you really hit the nail on the head when you said that because they look forward to it. Yeah. And if I'm running a few minutes behind, so I'm talking to one client and then I got to call another client, that client that I'm running a few minutes behind, 
he notices. And I'll be like, I, Abita, I'm so happy to hear from you. Like, I know I'm a few minutes late. I'm so sorry. I was finishing Aww. up another call. Yeah. They really do. It really becomes part of their everyday schedule. And for people that are retired and just might not have as much going on, mm-hmm. um, or look, their loved ones are busy. We're all busy. Yeah. And their loved ones can't call them all the time. This is a very nice and warm thing, like you said. So I wanted to piggyback on that real quick. Yeah. And then uh, about the technology, you're right. It's wonderful. The funny thing is, I always offer FaceTime, mm-hmm. but a lot of my clients are not into it. Yeah, because it's that generational yeah, gap too. Exactly. It's like they don't, some of them don't have it, don't understand it, whatever it may be. But it's the fact that there's still that technology um, connection where it's like, yeah, they know how to op- uh, turn on a phone call. Like mm-hmm. they know how to accept a phone call and they understand a phone call. It's certain like as our generation gets a little bit older and a little bit more into it's like your business doesn't go or fade out of like doesn't, you know, kind of fade out because there is this technology that still allows for that and still allows for you to like now perpetuate forward because you have people who like, I mean, some grandparents do get FaceTime, like do understand that. Oh like yeah. My, my own my kids' own grandparents. Yeah. Like my mine. parents and then my <laughs> husband. Yeah. They get it. They they love because my wife's family lives in San Diego. And so they love getting phone calls or FaceTime every day from little guy. Yeah. And they just like he, he's so smart now where he's um taking the phone. He's like, let me hold it and let's uh let's because he's so used to playing with his toys in front of them. He's like, come play toys with me now. And they're like on the screen. I'm like, okay, let's play toys together. And they just, they just look at him and they're like, oh, wow. Yay. And they're like, it's so beautiful because he'll show them the toys that they have given him where they're like, he, look, I have your toy and I'm still playing with it. And so it's just, to me, there's like that connection of like, you can't get that sometimes over the phone. And it's just, it's so beautiful that now we're starting to realize like, yeah, it's one part speaking, but it's also, there's a little bit of that video connection that really does help. And I think it's so beautiful. It's just, you see I the feel joy. Like, it, like you can, the world is so big, mm-hmm. but you can still make it so small in that way. Like, yeah, we can move out of, seriously out of the country with our kids and mm-hmm. still the grandparents can have that connection because yeah. of face. Yeah. Because of video and FaceTime and yeah, absolutely. Very nice. So I always I miss this question because we always ask everyone as we you know start to understand your business, like give us your origin story. Like how did this has has something happened in your family that has caused this to come about? Did you fall into this kind of category of business? How did this all come to be? So um, a couple things, really. Mm -hmm. I have a degree in gerontology, so which is the study of the elderly. It's a very niche degree. There's not too many of us. Yeah, (laughs) I've heard of it. That's the funny (laughs) thing is I've heard of it. I haven't met anyone (laughs) who has actually graduated with that degree. (laughs) It's a small one. Um, So there's a few things, like I said. So there's that. I also grew up in a home where my parents owned uh, a home care agency. So not like a group home where people live, but they sent caregivers, non-medical caregivers out to people's homes. Oh, okay. Where they live, where the clients live. So I was always hearing about this stuff. It was kind of a no-brainer to go into gerontology. Yeah. And then um, my own father got diagnosed with dementia in his late 50s and passed Mm. in his early 60s of it. Okay. So very, very young. Yeah, And I was a true sandwich generation caregiver because I have little kids, but they were even littler than truly. I think my daughter was just under a year. Yeah. And we were fortunate enough. We were able to put him in a memory care facility, mm-hmm. but I, you know, I was working full time, taking my kids to visit my dad at the place. And, you know, it, it, it was a lot, that is a lot yeah. of stress on, on anyone. Um, mm-hmm. and I truly felt that for as bad as the situation was, I was also very lucky because when I got to the facility, like there were caregivers and there were people there and, mm-hmm. you know, my, my kids were babies and everyone wanted to play with the baby. So I felt like <laughs> I got that one-on-one time with my dad, but I realized that that's not the case for everybody. Yeah. And I wanted to make a solution, uh, if that's the word, a uh, missing puzzle piece to the whole exactly. continuum of care, um, where it was an affordable option where people didn't have to feel that constant stress. Like, mm-hmm. I'm at work and I'm taking my kid to soccer practice and I don't have time to call mom. 
well, let me do that. Let compassionate callers do that. Yeah. Take, take that off your plate. And then when you do have the time, you can just be the daughter or be the son. Exactly. You don't have to worry about being, I quote, I should find a better word, but I say, uh, let compassionate callers be the nag. Let us say, mom, you take your medicine. <laughs> yes. Did you eat your lunch? Yeah. Have you drinking your water? It's hot in Arizona. Yep. Um, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I I think that that key component of compassion, because, you know, the, our daily lives can be stressful. And when you are, you know, adding that on top of having this phone call with, you know, someone that you're also taking care of partially, it can seem like a nag. It can seem like you're you're just, you know, uh, the the person who's just like telling them what to do and, and not being the actual son and daughter that loves them and cares for them and really lo- wants them to 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 succeed and to be okay and feel loved. And so, yeah, I definitely feel that component of it because I've had my days where I'm like, little guy's crying all day, or he just wants dad to give him love. And I don't have that much more in the tank. And I, you know, call my mom or call my dad. And I feel like I'm a little bit abrupt or even just kind of fast with my phone call. Okay. Okay. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. And you know, there are days where I feel like that and that's just not what I want to perpetuate or kind of give to them because that's just not who I am as a person. I want to want them to feel like I care and love them and want to hear about their day and want them to, to feel, you know, like I just truly had a, a wonderful conversation with my son. So that is just something that I can add. I, I continue to to say this about your business. It's just truly one of those puzzle pieces of like, it's just perfect. It fits in. Wow. And it's just one of those things that people should consider if they do have um, the, the time, you know, the, you know, not everyone can afford it, but if they do, it can, it's like, if you have a loved one that has this, wants this or needs this, I think you should really consider it because it is really like, I think about it myself. Like, do I want a phone call from my little guy every day? Of course I would love that. But if I had a, something that I knew that he wanted me to take full advantage of or like he's sending this love this whatever call for me then i'm like yeah this is love from him this is yeah. you know this is how i can this feel is how he's expressing it yeah exactly um so thank you for telling me about your history and just how how that went about because i can fully appreciate and understand that component of like you couldn't visit your dad every single day, maybe, exactly. but it's like, uh, it's, it's at least wonderful that you got to experience, you know, your kids, you know, a little bit of time with him, a little bit of time with you and, and having those moments because not everyone does get that opportunity. So I can fully appreciate that. And as I would love to just understand that first, I guess, conversation with your husband about like, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you, what, you know, what do you think? And like, <laughs> I'm thinking about making this a full-time gig, you know, what do you think? And so, because, you know, we have this podcast and we share um, items of like duties and things like that, but it's like, I can only imagine it's like getting off the ground. What were those first couple of months like? Yeah. Um, that is a good question. So he works full-time. Yeah. Um, at his okay. own job. And I have been in this industry forever. I feel like he has too, just because he hears so much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, he's extremely supportive and I run my ideas by him. I sometimes feel bad because he does work full time too. So I'm like, <laughs> hearing, hearing like, another business. Like five, minute, <laughs> five minute question. Um, he's the one that got me these this morning. So, like, oh, he, awesome. you know, <laughs> but, um, no, it was very supportive. The whole family. He comes from a very large family. I do not. Oh, so man. his whole family is so supportive. Um, you know, everyone always asks how the business is going. And everyone understands that, you know, I always say we're we're in a silver tsunami. I used to say it's coming, but we're yeah. we're literally in one as a country. Like yeah. there's just no getting around it. And wow. there are services that these people are going to need. And I kind of just had this degree and saw all this continuum of care and the cost of it all. And yeah, so I think everyone really understands my drive to start this. And just, I just want to be there and help so many people. Cause I went through it as a, as a caregiver. Mm-hmm. Sam, let me, I went through it as a sandwich generation caregiver. So I really saw what it was like to have my own life, what it was like to be a wife, 
to be a mom, to have full-time work, love someone who's extremely sick. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I think everyone on both of our sides of the family, including my husband, is very supportive. And That's awesome. I mean, yeah, it's just like, again, I... I can fully appreciate like that understanding of like, Hey, look, this is, I'm a passionate person about this. Like, this is something that I want to do. And I have ties to this. And I, I think this is only right. This is only the best way we can go about it. And so, yeah, hearing that the support is there is just incredible because again, it's like you're doing something that is not, not every day. Like you don't hear about, like, you don't even really like, when I first heard about you guys, I was like, what, this is a thing. Like I didn't even know that. So to hear about it firsthand from your perspective, it's so wonderful that people just get it. Like even your own family just like gets it. Like it's just, it's necessary. It's important. And we see the importance behind it. So it's really great. And I can only hope that it's just continued throughout the other people who you come, you know, approach and they just, I, I would love if you can share with us a story about maybe your first couple of clients that just yeah. like were like, thank you or something like that. Yeah, no, I would love to. Um, so yeah, the funny thing is I have clients and I don't know why, but they all are male. I don't know why I think, I think mm, it's really interesting. cute. I think it's yeah. really sweet. I don't know. But, um, so they're funny with me. They're really cute with me. And, you know, they always ask about, they're also very supportive of my clients. They always ask about my family and it's just a very nice thing. Um, but two, I have two stories about two different clients. So um, my very first client, I work very well with home care. If you're like familiar with that, it's the home care is the non-medical caregivers yeah. that go into the homes. Yeah. So actually my first client came from a home care agency. So we work in tandem. Okay. And so um, they do the caregiver in the morning and I do the call at night. Okay. And I knew, because I've been calling my client for a while, I said, he does not sound right. There is something going on. He sounds, for lack of a better word, loopy. Yeah. So I called the caregiver, the home care agency, and they went out and saw him. And it turns out he got his blood work done because of it. And he had a UTI. Oh, and so the two of us working in unison, T- is that? Yeah, tandem, tandem, yeah, yeah, tandem. Uh, he was able to get a UTI test done and get his antibiotics. That's wonderful. So, and ever since he's been a perfect, like he was back to normal. Aww. So that was awesome. I love that story because I'm like, listen, not that the caregiver wouldn't have caught it, but I was able to get it done right away. And yeah, the caregiver was when- able to see it. And it's so wonderful. It's like, again, you work in tandem together. It's like, not it's n- not everyone can see him throughout the day on a full day basis. Ex- but the f- exactly. But the fact that there was an overlap that consistently wow. like saw him and was like noticing the difference from day versus the evening versus just his overall, you know, uh, personality, what the, he's actually like. The fact that someone caught that right sooner than later is so beautiful and so fantastic because again as someone who's will be a future customer i I guarantee you to understand to understand like hey that does like i didn't even it doesn't even cross my mind on that kind of approach that you you not only do that like they're just incentives to want to to do business with you even more because it's like yeah that's absolutely right i can only afford you know, such and such, but the fact that someone has the wherewithal to have this overlap and to have this consistent tandem conversation that my, my person who I'm doing this for is safe in, you know, this overlap and they're being really cared for. And in a whole sense of the meaning, it's not only just me, it's these other entities coming together to say, Hey, look, you're not well, go, go check yourself out and, and get some help. And so beautiful. I love that story. That's fantastic. Thank you. And I will tell you for the home care part, like I said, I worked so well with them because you hit it again on the head because it's really a beautiful service. Home care, I will love. And I, mm-hmm. I I recommend it for everyone. It can be pricey per hour. Yeah. So if someone can only afford maybe the minimum per week or yeah. just four hours a day, that's a big reason why I come in as a very affordable option to mm-hmm. cover the rest of the days. Absolutely. And sometimes that's really what they just need is like, 
someone to help them out to situate their day in the morning. And then it's, it's like, okay, well, we just need a phone call. We don't need someone to, to be there all day. So it's like, exactly. yeah, it's like, they're not, it's, I, again, it's like, I think this is so great the way you put it. It's like, it just fits. It's a puzzle piece that you, you can add in there and not have to worry as much. And it's just over, it's an overlap that they will be loved and cared for. So again, perfect. I, what's your story? Number two, I'd love to hear yeah. this because this first one was out of the park. <laughs> oh, I love. So this is another guy, another male and he could not be cuter. I, I really think he's like the cutest. and. He lives alone and um, he sometimes a lot loses his cell phone. But when I say oh. that, I mean like it's under his bed yeah. or, and I haven't even touched with this yet, Jose, with you, but every client gets an emergency protocol with me. Okay. Because, you know, God forbid they fall or whatever the case. Mm -hmm. So when one of my clients doesn't pick up when I call them the first time, mm -hmm. I always wait around five minutes and then I call a second time. Okay. If they don't pick up on that second time, we jump right into action with the emergency protocol. Okay. So for this guy, he has 911. It's his emergency because his family does not live in state. Yeah. So I called non-emergency. I always send the, because this happens a lot with him. I always <laughs> send the EMT over as okay. for a wellness check. Yes. Every single time my friend is fine. He's perfectly fine he just can't find his phone <laughs> so emts are there they're looking under the bed find it every single time emt gives me a call i know he's safe and then the awesome. cute part is my client will call as soon as the emt the emt leaves every single time that fails like thank you so much for sending them over i would never have found my cell phone <laughs> you're so welcome <laughs> oh my goodness that's beautiful yeah, I love he, again it's like it it's just those funny little things those stories that really make up the the beautiful tapestry that is your business and it's just it's incredible too it's like again the fact that there is someone who cares enough to be like look we we we're gonna we're gonna I'm going to have a conversation with you. Yes. I'm going to talk to you. Yeah. However, God willing, we're going to, we're going to have a talk this day. If, if you don't pick up, like you have this whole strategy and it's yeah. wonderful. Like, yeah. I think that's so perfect. Like that, you. that is so cute. That oh, they're like, so cute. They keep me, they're just, and my kids say hi to them if they're around during the call. Like it's, it's a very lovely thing that I'm doing. It is lovely. Don't get me wrong, but also it truly helping yeah um so i it's it's so much more than just lovely because it is but you know we have our ears to these people mm -hmm. like we touched on earlier so that their loved ones can continue their lives and not have yeah. to worry all the time yeah absolutely i think that's incredible that you you are being able to not only share like them share the little bit that they have with you, but also yeah. you sharing with them and the fact that the family talks to them and the kids are able to know them by first name basis <laughs> sometimes too. It's like, it's really, it's beautiful. Cause that's how I want my son to be. It's like, I've always been the kind of kid that my parents were so friendly with the neighborhood and they, they, they cherish their relationship with their friends and the kids would come over and, and, and our house was kind of like, the you know people the come over the hangout yeah, house and then yeah. they just hang out and we'd have barbecue cook for the kids they'd stay a little bit longer in the evening and so it was really it was great for me because that's how i wanted to have my family approach our lives and what i wanted out of a family and so now as we've kind of you know the as you grow in a generation, like you're growing as you like, how do I fit that ideal? Cause there's not really like neighbor, like I grew up on the East coast a little bit. Oh, and so that's did. where that kind of ties. Um, cause the houses were these kind of close, uh, wall sharing houses and okay. they're, what, I forget what they call them. Like, I think they call them like, like townhomes, town, townhomes, but like town boat townhomes oh, where they're where like, did you grow up? Uh, Pennsylvania, uh, outside of Philly, like, uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Okay. And so it's like these, because they're old factory oh, row homes, houses. row houses, that's row houses. Yeah. There it's we go. Said, yeah, yeah. 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 Row houses. So yeah, I grew up in a row house and it's like the last one before. So our house was like 
the street and then we're the first row house and like all these row houses were next to us. So all the kids would come to the end of the street and like, you know, hang out at my house and barbecue, do all this stuff. And the neighborhood would watch all the kids. So it's just was a beautiful thing. It is beautiful. It's how it should be. I yeah. agree with you. And so now as you know, I'm, you know, having a family and it's like, that doesn't kind of work as the similar factor, but what I think we do differently here is like our house is very much an open format of like, you can come walk through the, 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 the front of the house all the way to the backyard. And it's all like open. And uh, we love having guests come over and like my son's starting to realize like, Oh, people come over to the house and they like, Hey, talk to my dad. And like, they hang out a little bit and it's just, it, it's a beautiful thing to see him understand that and know that we have, we're allowed, he's allowed to have people over and, and he can talk to people. And he's just, he's such a happy little boy. He'll say hi. He'll be like, trying to do his little talks with them and they just I, love him. <laughs> it sounds like you guys are doing such an amazing job with him because um, it sounds like you, uh, people of all age are coming to your home. Yeah. And I will tell you that um, not many, but there are some places in Arizona and out that are doing this. Um, I don't know if you've heard this, but it's this generational preschool. Oh, where and there is one. I'm not sure where you live, but there is one in the West Valley. Okay. And what they do is they have these preschools at senior centers. Oh, no, I did not it's hear this. Bit, yeah, it's very, it's very cool. And it's very this. on purpose. And it's to get all these generations, I was going to say to play together, but to like be together, you yeah. know? And it's very much on purpose to show the kids how to act around mm -hmm. the elderly and to get the elderly to honestly be kids again. Yeah. And, um, so they're, they're popping up. There's a few, there's one I know of, I've been to and been in a Sun City Peoria ish. Okay. But I'm not sure if you've been down to Tempe at ASU. Have you heard of the Marabella? I have. And that's the okay. one I was going to ask you about. Yep. And so we have a couple of friends that are, they are, their kids are in the preschool uh, learning. Um, it is part of the, the Tempe ASU campus. And they, they were talking about this with us about the this like um generation like they call it something i can't remember it was like a gener like but they were saying yeah it's like this um new way of you know educating mm -hmm. the, the the kids and bringing in the the el the more elderly to help them um watch and and play with them and so i have man. heard of it and so yes <laughs> it's amazing and the one in, in tempe is very interesting because it's right on asu's campus mm -hmm. So it's not um, necessarily pre-K, although they do bring pre-K classes in, but it's these elders are with ASU students. Yeah. And so it's a, it's a general, like more than generation. And I actually went to school at ASU and they were starting that program with oh. the, the, the kids. And so as I was going to class one day, I was seeing these kids play outside in this area. And it's, it, I think it's beautiful. Like oh, it, you, It's amazing. It reminds you too. It's like, okay, you're just because you don't have kids doesn't mean that there's yeah. not another student that doesn't have a child that comes to campus every day yeah. too. And so for me, it's like, I had that appreciation more because we did have one, um, she was in her late fifties at the time and she was with our program or my design program that I was in. And she was just, again, like we were a small group there and we loved her like a mother because we would help her when she needed it. She asked for help and she was more apt to ask for help. And I think that did a lot of good for yeah. us as a group because we weren't afraid to talk to her. We weren't afraid to like help her out with like computer stuff. Like she had, she had a lot of questions about computer stuff. And so, you know, it was this kind of not, not like, we're trying to compete with each other. We're trying to help one another. We're trying yeah. to, you know, provide an opportunity for all of us to grow and learn. And so and, I think it really helped. And I think to your point, like the fact that she, I, I give her credit. That's a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. to be an older person, to go to back to get your degree, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of courage. And yeah. the way you guys sounds like you guys just embraced her. And it was like, this is our group. This yeah. is who's in it, you yeah. know? Absolutely. And I think it also, I mean, when we graduated, she was there. It encouraged my mother, who's now is trying to finish her degree. Oh my God. I love she, that so much. She is in ASU's online programs now, and she's, you know, learning a lot and she is 
providing an opportunity for herself to grow. And she's, and she didn't, wasn't always tech savvy. She was actually always asking me for help on tech and stuff like that. And um, now she's like, she does a little bit on her own. Like she does, she's not afraid to like, you've you know, got to be so proud. I'm absolutely. So oh I tell her all the time, how proud I am of her about doing this because I know it's not easy. Well, I was the one of the very first to get my secondary, like my master's degree. And so for her to feel encouraged enough to want to say, Hey, I'm going to do a couple of classes. I'm going to try and get my bachelor's degree, but it's going to take me a lot longer because I'm only doing it singular two classes yeah. at a time. I keep telling her, it's like, good, do okay, it. You'll do Who it. Cares? You'll yeah. get it done. It take all the time you need. I love you. You have every opportunity to grow and learn. And I, I, tell her all the time i'm so proud of you keep going keep going because that's what you told me to you know yeah, keep going right and so that is something that i very much i think she saw her graduate and she's like i, I think i can do that i think i can make that happen for myself and that is oh I'm, i don't even know your mom and i am so happy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes thank me you so, so much. happy yeah she's a she's she's a big ball of um um love and and encouragement and she was the real you know, she, she got her associates and, you know, she knew how important education was. And that's what she encouraged in the household for me and my brother. And same thing with my father, my father knew she, he came from uh, um, Puerto Rico and he didn't know English when he moved to Chicago. And then he went into the military and that's how he met my parent, my mom. And it's just, again, he knew the importance of education. Yeah. He knew the importance of getting a degree and, and allowing yourself to be a better person from it. And so that was very much encouraged in our household. And I had, <laughs> I'd like to say I didn't have any opportunity to go anywhere else, but I, I know that I would have gone to college either way. I'd love, I love learning. I yeah. Learning was something that I loved doing and um, educating myself and just was a big avid reader and, and gobbled well, up education. You can tell because I don't think you would do this podcast if you weren't, you would never yeah. have learned yeah. about my business. You would never yeah. learn about that business or. Absolutely. Yeah. I just, again, I grew up around storytellers. I grew up around people who wanted you to learn and, and, and the importance of learning. So that was something that really pushed me forward and, um, my journey and, and led me here to, like you said, to the podcast. And it was just, it's been a snowball effect ever since. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, okay. We are, we are, we, we took a left turn, but we're going to, okay, okay, we're going to take, we're, we're going to back. <laughs> um, one of the things I'd love just to quickly go over is just the different services that you provide mm -hmm. for the business, because it's not just a phone call. There is actually a kit that has yes. come into the into hindsight and, and to the services. So I'd love to talk about that and what other things that you provide. So go ahead and tell us a little bit more. Yeah, thank you. So um, there's three packages you can get. Mm -hmm. It is month to month. So if someone wants to even just try it for a month, see if it fits, I would never run it for the next month without talking to you. But yeah. so there's three packages to choose from. Um, the first one is going to be your basic Every package, you're going to get the up to five calls seven days a week. Awesome. Up to, up to five calls per day. But um, the first one is just that. So you're going to get those calls. But on top of it, you know, you'll get your free assessment. We'll get your emergency protocol taken care of. Nice. Your second package will have all that, of course. But then you get a monthly activity kit. Oh, awesome. The reason I love this so, so much is because kind of what we touched on the loneliness. So, you know, your, your loved one's home, wherever they call home mm -hmm. and it's nationwide, although I live here, so I'm trying very hard to focus on Arizona, but you know, what if your loved one lives out of state yeah. and they get this monthly activity kit and it's not just a book. It's so much more. I use a third party who cares so much about what these elderly are getting nice. and every game they send comes with large print laminated instructions oh, and there's awesome. arts and crafts. And there's, there's so much that the other really cool thing about it is on the phone calls. It's something else to talk about. Absolutely. So if yeah. you're worried like, Oh, I don't know what I can talk to about this person. Well, listen if they have that kid that kid's going to keep them busy yep um so that comes once a month and then the last package is all of all that good stuff plus um we do grocery delivery so again not in person mm -hmm. but if you need uh like in, if you have 
Instacart, I'm trying to think, there has to be other people, but I just, Instacart always comes yeah. to mind. Yeah, of course. Um, Instacart, I can get anything delivered to the front door. Mm-hmm. I say, as long as they can move it from the front door where they need it within mm-hmm. the home, I can yeah. get it delivered. Yeah. And also like not all drugs from pharmacies can be delivered, but the ones that can, I can get delivered. Awesome. Yeah. That's really so, great. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, again, like we're, we're talking about things that like we we take for granted for ourselves as being still kind of um, independent. But when that dependency gets a little bit lackluster or just, you know, you need a little bit more help throughout the day, you know, those moments where you're just like, God, I need, you know, help with groceries or I need just something to do. Um, those little things really do make it all the difference. And I think I want to touch upon the kit really, really quickly because one part it's like talking about, but the other part is like being interactive with it. It's like if you are the the family member calling, you know, every so often, like, hey, did you finish? Or hey, do you need some help with it? Like, you know, whatever it may be. And you and I talk about this off air about uh, Brittany's um, aunt who we would go and visit. And just the act of, you know, we would do a crossword, just a small, easy crossword with her whenever. And it was like one of the first things we'd get out of the way because she loved doing it. And, um, you know, I would walk through it with her and I'm very like, I love puzzles and things like that. And mm-hmm. that's, that's my thing. And um, so we, you know, have a conversation, like we'd go over like the words, um, talk about like, you know, if it's something more um, in her high, like, you know, she understood that we talk about like the history behind it, the, the kind of like, uh, you know, she'd tell me a little bit stories about like when it first, like if it's something that's like an item, she was like, oh yeah, I remember when that first came out and like, you know, people would do such and such or things like that. And it's just, again, it's like if you have that interactive approach, it does really provide an opportunity to have a dialogue and have the, the brain you know, function to go into memory banks and to go into those different items to help them keep themselves um, entertained, um, independent, whatever that may be. And then uh, to go into a little bit more about like you providing groceries. Again, I being someone who's caretaking for a little child, there are grocery runs where I just go and get bananas or go and get milk or go and get singular items that you know, we just need because he has a smoothie every day with yeah. banana inside of it, or he has, you know, whatever, like he, he, he'll freak out if he doesn't have these certain kinds of, uh, applesauce packets. Like it's just those things that he loves that I want to provide for him that I, that I can do by going to a grocery store and going to go get it and whatever. And some days like, I'll just like, for me, it's like target has, you know, you pull up, and they deliver it in your car. Yeah. And so yes, like that sort genius. of thing. It's, it's just <laughs> great. And so, you know, I am able to do that because I'm independent, but some people like I've seen elderly, like, you know, they do it because their knees hurt and they yeah. can't get out of the car. Like yeah. they just, you know, want to sit down and then be in their car for a little bit. It's like, it's so wonderful that you guys provide these opportunities again, where it's affordable, approachable and, um, really great to have these opportunities to do because it's not every day that someone's caring enough to do this for the person that you care about most. So it's, and I, I appreciate you. You fully understand it. So I appreciate it because this service is out there. I can't take the credit. There are, but businesses, I have competitors, no question. So when I, but there's not a lot of us. Mm -hmm. So when I'm trying to explain this, it's nice when I see so much passion that you understand like oh my gosh oh, yeah, like, yeah it, it's it, i appreciate it so thank you no no worries because that's again that's part of one of the things i always like to say about this podcast is like you could again i'm not changing the wheel here it's like there's other podcasts that do business interviews and and you can also go on the local news program like channel three it's like they have theirs i think the best thing that i can provide is my love and appreciation and how i approach the conversation is just like again i'm a big cheerleader when it comes to things i'm passionate about and i very much try and make every program that come you know every person who comes in my friend because that is something that i really want to walk away with is a friendship someone who I can call and say, Hey, look, someone asked about 
something that they need. And I think you would be the best fit for it. So I'm going to lead them to you to, to, to be the person that is on my Rolodex. So it's like, I have a person for that. Trust me. I have a person for that. They're so great. Bina will take very good care of you. And I promise she's the best go, go seek her out. And so that's, that's definitely something that I've kind of been like telling people about our podcast is like, like you can go a lot of places, but thank you for coming here because I really am passionate about every yeah. person who comes in. I understand that completely. Jose. Completely. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, we're reaching the end of our conversation here, but I don't want to walk away without asking this last um, kind of, this is our final questions that we usually ask is give us some goals, like give yes. us something that our listeners can help you out with. Yeah, I appreciate that. So um, yeah, if anyone's listening out there and they are feeling stressed, uh, they are, even if you're not working full time, but you, you have that elderly one that you care about, mm-hmm. um, make sure to reach out. I'd love to just talk to you, even if, you know, we do work with you or if not, I, I'm so full of resources. I've been in this industry for so yeah. long that um, support groups I can give you, um, home care agencies, place, whatever, whatever it is that you need for your particular life yeah. for what you're going through. I love, that's what I love to do. I love to do that. Um, so, you know, just my, I guess my goal is to have people contact me, but let's see if we're a good fit. Um, I'm really trying hard to touch on those people who do work full time, like mm-hmm. any HR brokers out there that feel like this could help their employees. Yeah. Um, give them some peace of mind during the work day. Business um, to business. I get it. Yeah. B, B to B. Yeah. I think that's really great because again, people, like you said, people who work full time and, and this could be a wonderful add on to um, something that, you, you know, I work for a, a larger scale uh, firm and they're, they're wonderful programs that come in that like yeah. we are, we can take full advantage of. It's amazing. And I think it's, again, that is something that uh, if we can help make into the universe and help you get to that first business to business opportunity, then let's do it. I'm totally ah, I down. Love it, Jose. Thank you. I, I, I feel for you. I like, I have my fingers crossed and I'm going to do everything that I can to promote this because again, we, We've, I mean, I, again, I feel passionate about it just because I'll be honest, I've lost two grandparents and they were two big influences in my life. One, just because he taught me the importance of um, storytelling, but the other, just because of his approach to life, he was very much a, uh, a how do I really put this? He's, he was a happy-go-lucky guy who lived in the jungles of Puerto Rico wow. and he had a simple life. Like it wasn't hard for him. It was more about, you know, he loved the rainforest. He loved where he lived and he took care of the land and he took care of the the things that were his own. And he lived a very simplistic life. Yeah. And, and that's something that, you know, he didn't, he didn't reach for the st- I want to say it was like he understood that his life what it was and he he didn't he he didn't feel like he didn't need it more he yeah. loved it and so that's what I'm he trying was happy. to happy he was content yeah, he was, happy. He was content yeah. and so I want to live that content life yeah. too and so that is something that I I try and tell myself or try and speak into the world about you know feeling content and living in that content lifestyle and so i i very much um you know i wish that they were still around but i will always have that love and appreciation for them and what they provided for me as their grandchild and if i can do something that helps their legacy or helps give them um a smile down from the heavens man I want to do that. And so thank you again for this conversation. I do leave the end of this to allow you to promote the business in the sense that tell us what, where we can find yeah. you online, um, phone number, anything in between. The floor is yours, Bina. Uh, thank you. And Jose, thank you. I thought what you just said about your grandparents was beautiful. So thank you. I, appreciate I it. know they're smiling, but um, you can reach Compassionate Callers, literally at CompassionateCallers.com. Um, my a uh, work phone that you can call or text mm-hmm. is 602-529-5850. Inquiries at compassionatecallers.com. Awesome. And then on social, it's just at compassionate callers. Beautiful. And uh, I, again, I thank you for everything that you do. I know 
some of this cannot be easy just because again you're dealing with a factor of age and sometimes you lose a couple of people and yeah. I, I i emotionally you know being attached to them and things of that nature it's just again uh, cannot be as easy as if you no know, you just letting it go but i feel for you thank you for being such an emotionally compelling and just overall fantastic individual to allow this business to flourish and succeed. And I have nothing but high hopes for you and your family. Thank you again for this wonderful business and wonderful conversation. We do have an outro for us. You can hear every episode of Finding Arizona Podcast at FindingArizonaPodcast.com. Our, all of our social medias is under Finding Arizona Podcast. If you want to send an email, inquiry, whatever that may be, send it at FindingArizonaPodcast at gmail.com. Last but not least, Always kisses, hugs, and belly rubs to our four-legged friends, and we will see you next time. Bye, y'all.